What's up guys, another update from Frozen Electronics here. Um, I've been working on my battery charge circuit using the BQ2057W from TI and um, I'm having some very bizarre problems. Um, everything was working. I'll let you guys take a quick look at the circuit here. Uh, last time you guys saw it, it wasn't nearly complete. But now it's pretty much done. Uh, actually, it is done. I have everything uh, done as, according to the schematic in the data sheet. Uh, and so everything should be working. But uh, And it was. That's the strange part, is that everything was working. And you can see this big green thing here. Um, I couldn't find the right value resistor. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I have coils and coils and coils of magnet wire. So why don't I just wind my own 0.2 ohm resistor, which is exactly what I did. And it's working like a charm. I'm pretty sure that's not the issue. Um, so yeah, that was kind of interesting. It took me a few uh, minutes just to figure out how much resistance there was per turn and then work it all out. This battery, by the way, uh, 8.4 volts, uh, 7.4 nominal, um, and they're 820 milliamp hour. Um, so I've been trying to charge them at about, uh, oh about 400 milliamps or so between 400 and 500 so that were less than or around half C anyway my point being that this can dump a lot of current when it's short circuited a lot of current just like any battery dangerous amounts of current so you have to be very careful always pay attention to the data sheet very closely for example you know I have a diode here I have another protection reverse protection diode in front of the MOSFET which is something that I forgot to put in because I know that this MOSFET actually does have one internally but they're usually kind of crappy um, they're very basic uh, and that could be what is causing my problems is that I ran the circuit without this in there initially and uh, that could have been what caused the problem anyway I've been working on the circuit for the last couple of hours I finally got it working I had everything wired up and it wasn't working and then I remember that I forgot to put the um, the voltage divider over here for the temperature um, compensation because I'm not using that because I don't have a compatible thermocouple uh, with this circuit and they say it's fine just uh, make sure this is at about half VCC so I just put a simple voltage divider in there and bingo the lights came on everything was working I was actually watching the voltage on my battery climb like it was actually charging uh, and at a nice you know smooth pace so I was like great I finally got it I turned and started uh, drawing the circuit that as I finally had it working into my engineering notebook so I was doing like the final draft basically and then I started smelling something funny and I was like huh that's weird and I looked over um, and there was no smoke or anything everything everything looked fine um, but I noticed that the, both of the LEDs were on which is kind of weird it's supposed to be one or the other so then I took my multimeter and I measured the the voltage and um, it had it was above where it had started but it had stopped for some reason um, then I noticed that the uh, this MOSFET was really hot to the touch um, so I went and turned off my power supply uh, maybe I'll go freehand here so you guys can see what I'm talking about so I know that this makes it a little bit less watchable, so forgive me. But anyway, I was sitting like this. I thought, oh, that's weird. So I went, turned my power supply off, which is the bottom one over there. Came back to here, was kind of looking at it for a second, and then I noticed smoke. And I'm like, what the heck? I just turned it off. There's no power going to it. How could there be smoke? It took me almost 10 seconds to remember, oh, yeah, there's a battery connected. So I pulled one of the cords connected to the battery kept smoking I couldn't figure out where the smoke was coming from pulled the other cord and then it stopped I later realized that the smoke was either coming from the chip itself or from the MOSFET now what happened is that I'll put you back on the tripod what happened is that after I shut the voltage off to the system uh, somehow the battery was short-circuiting through the chip. I don't even understand exactly what happened. The only thing I can think of is that the the PNP or the P-channel MOSFET completely failed, but I've tested it and it doesn't seem to be shorted. So I can't really figure out what the failure mode was. But anyway, luckily I have three of these chips. Um, but man, I, like, I don't, and this might be hard to see, but, you see, oh yeah, you can see that. Look, I literally burnt my finger quite badly when I touched the chip to see how hot it was 
because I wasn't sure where the uh, heat was coming from. Yeah, you guys can see that on camera, eh? It doesn't look that bad, but boy, did that hurt. Oh, that much heat in one tiny little spot like that. I measured it with a thermal couple afterwards, and that was after it had cooled down, and it was still at over 70 degrees. So I imagine it was probably at, probably pushing 200 degrees. Um, so obviously, as I said, these batteries can dump a lot of current. Now, interestingly, it was, as I said before, I'm pretty sure it's the transistor, and the reason I think that is because it was the cable um, going to the uh, drain. Or was it the source? Let me take a look. I <laughs> can't remember off the top of my head. Um, there is one part. Let me look at my schematic. Yes, so one half of the battery, like the positive part, the positive pin of the battery, it goes to the battery pin on the chip. I pulled that one and it kept smoking. That pin just senses the voltage so that it knows where it's at. Then it goes to the drain of the P-channel MOSFET, um, and then the gate of the P-channel MOSFET goes to the constant current control. Um, yeah, actually, and there's that resistor I stuck in there, which I think might actually not be required. Anyway. Basically, I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, it sucks because this is a really cool circuit, uh, and the thing is that it was working. So obviously, I think as the I think it was working before the MOSFET heated up so much that it blew. That's sort of my theory at this point because I can't otherwise explain it in my head. Like, why would it? It was working for I watched it for almost a minute, watching the uh, current rise or the voltage rise. Sorry. No, that resistor is fine, so it didn't get burnt. Yeah, I'm stumped. So if anyone knows anything, I don't know if anyone's ever used this chip before, um, but if anyone has any ideas, uh, I would greatly appreciate any tips. Um, I'm pretty sure I have everything right. Like, I really read the data sheet a bunch of times. As I said, luckily I do have three of these chips. I've actually soldered a second one in, made a couple changes, quickly uh, turned it on and the same thing happened the, the chip started heating up so before it got to a damaging temperature I you know unplugged everything unplugged the battery turned off the power supply um, interestingly though of course when you have the power supply on and the battery connected nothing happens the chip doesn't heat up the MOSFET heats up a bit um, but that's because I guess the potential is being cancelled out uh, but the second you turn off the power supply oh man you should I you should see it on the thermal couple the the temperature just spikes. Within a couple of seconds, it goes up over 100 degrees. Like, we're talking a lot of current. Anyway, um, enough of me blabbing about this. Uh, I just wanted to update you guys. So, um, I have started to work on a PDF um, of projects you can do with the ATtiny13. So, my plan is to release that with the boards once I finally get them. Uh, don't you hate when this happens when you have a tube of ICs and you lose half the one of the plug thingies that holds them all into place? Oh, there it is. Of course, it ended up on the floor. Anyway, so I'm going to, uh, once the boards come and I populate them, oh man, you can actually see that this chip is charred. <laughs> it's right beside its identical chip, like an unused one, and it's about ten times blacker. Which is hard to imagine, seeing as all the ICs are black anyway. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty screwed up. I really hope the other one's okay. I mean, they're not terribly expensive chips, but I don't want to have to order more and wait for them. This is one little circuit I'm trying to prototype, just so I can charge this one battery. Anyway, so, uh, if people are interested, and it seems like people are, then I probably will order more of these boards and assemble them by hand, and uh, either give them away or uh, sell them. Probably just at cost to anyone who's interested. The ET Tiny 13, as I said, it's my favorite IC. I really love it. It's it's just a great little chip. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, so yeah, I would uh, really like to do something like that. That would be very interesting. I think I'd love to share with people um, the stuff that I'm into, which is what I'm already trying to do through these videos. So what else do I have to update? Not a heck of a lot, really. Um, that's basically all I worked on. It took me about a, you know a while to get the the wire. I had to hand wrap resistors. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of... Oh, come on. 
whole bunch of prototypes floating around. I tried different wire uh, thicknesses, of course. The thicker the wire, the less resistance per turn. Um, and this thick stuff was just uh, way too little resistance per turn. It would have taken like a cup, like, you know, a hundred and something turns just to get to a quarter of an ohm, which is what I need. Um, but yeah, um, once I have this circuit working, I'm going to post the schematic so that if you ever have a LiPo battery, you can easily order um, this chip and build yourself a charger in about 10 minutes. I mean, it's a very, very simple circuit. That's why I'm confused, because there's not a lot to go wrong. Um, but anyway, that's all for today. It's already 10 minutes. Man, time flies when you start chatting. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe. Check out frozenelectronics.com. Uh, another big thank you to Peter for helping me. Definitely, guys, check it out. Uh, there's going to be more content there as time goes by. There's a projects page where I'm going to post stuff I'm working on. It's a lot of work, um, but I'm trying to keep up with it. And I'm trying to make it interesting. So thanks a lot. Come again soon.